Can you guys hear me? Test, test, test. Just testing if there's an echo. Is there any echo, Aritra? Oh, that's good. Whew, I'm glad there's no echo. Okay. So, first of all, welcome, guys. We have 18 visitors. That's cool. So basically what I want to do is to give you a primer to SimScale. So let me just switch. Let me just do it a bit differently. I make myself small. And what we'll do now is we ju can just get started. And in case you have a question, but a raining sun, could be that this is the, uh, my laptop maybe crying like crazy because I'm live streaming and stuff. Wait, do you have clear audio? But a raining sun. Could be that this is the... Okay, but for me there is clear audio, so that's I think that's fine. So what we can do now is to just get started and you can put your questions in the in the uh, live chat and I'll make sure to answer them. Uh, Aritha must be on your side because when I unmute myself, there is no sizzling sound. Anyway, let's just get started. Oh, that's good. Okay, awesome. Thanks for the feedback, Saud and Rohit and hello, by the way. Okay, awesome. Sanchi, thanks a lot. Rohit, also welcome. So uh, I'll just move through the slides and uh, you can let me know. So let me just test. Okay. So I'm just going through the presentation in case you have any questions. Um, make sure to post them inside of the chat and I'll make sure to uh, to answer them afterwards. So first of all, welcome. Uh, today we have a primer to SimScale and some of you might know me already. And my name is Josef. I'm a mechanical engineer from Germany and I'm currently a community and academic program manager at SimScale. And in my studies, I focused on computational mechanics as well as fluid mechanics. And I'm currently starting my thesis in the field of geometric deep learning. And what I would recommend you to do is to follow me on social media, most most importantly on LinkedIn, but also on Twitter and Instagram, where I am most actively on. Or and post a lot of stuff. So make sure to follow me there, and we can keep in touch. So the agenda: uh, first, we will discuss what SimScale actually is. Why do we use SimScale, or why should you use SimScale? Why do we use simulation in general and how does it help us in our workflow? Then I will give you some tips on how to lubricate your workflow to make sure you don't do any beginner's mistakes. And then at the end, there is a demo, quote unquote, but it's basically just to show you how the platform works and we don't do any project demo. And of course, there's a Q&A at the end for clarifications if you have any questions regarding the platform, suggestions for future videos and so on. Okay, first of all, what I want to do is I'm going out of the slides now and I want you to basically let me know in the chat where are you from and just to have an impression basically. Just give me some side information. What do you study and
just put it inside of the chat and we're good to go from india sandesh from nepal oh that's that's cool nice to nice to see you here studying in mechanical engineering super cool from nepal awesome Okay, let's let's keep moving. Let's put your locations inside and we'll get back to that later. So first of all, what is SimScale? So SimScale was founded in 2012, as some of you might know, maybe if you're a little bit familiar with SimScale. And we have offices in Munich, Boston and New York. So the headquarters is in Munich and we have two smaller offices, I would say, in Boston and New York. And we are currently more than 80 employees, maybe I think 88, something like that. It's fluctuating, so uh, it's roughly 88. And we are across eight different time zones. So first of all, what is SimScale? To give you an impression what it actually is and why we use it. It's basically the first world cloud-based simulation platform. And what you can do on it is use it for CFD, FEA, as well as thermodynamical simulations. So, and the cool point about this is that you can access it via a standard web browser. That means you open your web browser, you have an account, you log in and then use it. And I'll get back to that later during the demo. So if anyone is interested in working for SimScale or wants to have some tips for applications in general, first of all, if you want to apply, go to simscale.com slash jobs. And if you want tips in general on how to apply for SimScale and how to prepare for interviews in general, make sure to check out podcast number six on my channel, where I interviewed Christopher Chamberlain and Lisa Wittmann from the SimScale HR team. And they give very good tips on how to apply and what you should know about SimScale or when you apply for other jobs. So why why is SimScale so important and why, especially in those times, and why should you use it? So the problem is that traditional tools, maybe you have used some in your university career, I would say. If you use, for example, I used Abacus in my studies. And the problem there is, is I had a quite good laptop but unfortunately, if I ran any contact simulation on my laptop, after some time, I couldn't do anything else except waiting for the simulation to end, which was a hardware restriction. So that means if you scale it up, you need some HPC hardware, which means nothing else than high performance computing hardware, something like a server and so on. And the problem is that you first have to get the server and all the hardware, which adds up to several thousand euros, which is quite costly. And also you have this know-how barrier which means that once you have these high-tech tools, it's sometimes quite hard to get into them and also to understand them because most of them are like a black box and you don't really have an understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. Now on the other side, we have cloud-based tools, which is SimScale in this case. You basically need no hardware. You only need your laptop, as I mentioned, an account, and you can get started. Also is, a very important point is that you have variable costs. I mean, you have no fixed costs. You have, if you acquire, for example, a professional license, you have a fixed price first, like you pay a specific amount, and then it's variable. Let's say if you want to use X amount of core hours or GPUs, in case you use a lattice Boltzmann simulation, for example, uh, everything is very variable. And that's a cool thing. And it's very easy to use, which we'll see later on. So why do we use simulation and why is it actually important? Are we doing this for fun? Actually, no. The big problem is, is if you design something and some of you might be from a Formula student team watching now, is that at first you have your CAD model, right? You have your Formula student CAD model, for example, or any CAD model you use for your thesis. And usually what we do in the, um, in the old workflow I'd say is you have a physical prototype, you test this prototype and then depending on how it behaves, you either redesign it and have this iterative cycle, which can become quite costly, but also time consuming, which ends up costing you a lot of money, obviously. And then at the end, at some point you build it. However, you can use something called simulation where you can take these steps and compress it basically into the simulation step and then the redesign step. That means you put in your CAD model in your simulation software, can run several tests and you don't need a prototype 
which I'll come to in a few moments, and can redesign it inside of your simulation tool. So that's very convenient. And however, you sometimes or most of the time need a prototype, which can be a single prototype. Then you do some testings on it, acquire some data, and then can validate your results that you have in your simulation and with your real life example. And at the end, you save a lot of money. Here we can see also a graph where this is uh, depicted quite good, in my opinion. So in the very early phase on the x-axis, you see time. So on, the more you go to the left, the more you are in the concept phase or like first phase of designing your prototype, you can see that you have can have a big influence on the design. However, if we progress in time, you can really see that it's becoming harder and harder to make adaptions to your prototype slash model. And you also see that the cost of changes increase. But on the other hand, we gain more information the further we progress in time. So it's always like a trade-off between information, cost, and influence we have on our products. However, the as you can see in the very in the beginning of the time axis, this is the front end of innovation, and we use something called the sometimes it's called in CFD the front loading process, which means you take this early phase, use as many simulation or IT solutions as you can and afford actually can afford, and make sure that you don't lose too much time and money for prototyping. And at the end, of course, save additional costs. So a primer to CFD and FEM, what do these abbreviations stand for? Well, some of you might know it. CFD stands for computational fluid dynamics and FEM stands for finite element method, also commonly known as finite element analysis. And these are fields which incorporate numerical analysis to simulate and solve problems. Right. Also, we the underlying equations of these methods are partial differential equations, which model nature and are continuous in nature. And what we want to do to actually make them solvable is to transform them into a system of linear equations. And no worries, we don't go into mathematical details because I'll show you later on where you can find everything on my channel. So with today's computational power available, we have very large systems of equations which, can, equations which can be solved. And as I mentioned earlier on, it's always an iterative process. That means you make some adaptions, go back to the beginning, fix things that you have noticed which are maybe not right, something like your boundary conditions, and then rerun your simulations. Let me just check if everything works in the live stream. Because if I present... Okay, I'll just, I'm just putting up my phone so I can basically see because if I present, I cannot see my, my other screen. It's a bit tedious. Anyway, let's move on. So computational fluid dynamics, as I mentioned, we these are along with finite element analysis. We also have discrete element analysis, smooth particle hydrodynamics, and so on. These are all methods. And on this slide, I want to show you some kind of joke, quote unquote. Because sometimes CFDs also refer to colors for directors or colorful fake dynamics. Which basically means, first of all, it's a joke, right? Because CFD stands for computational fluid dynamics. But the joke is that if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. And the thing is, is let's say you have a boss who is not so familiar with simulation. You can basically show him every colorful picture that you can create, which is a bit fun also but a bit sad at the same time because he doesn't know if the results are somehow correct and he cannot perform any sanity checks for himself because he has no experience in simulation that's why it's important to have a little bit of experience in simulation and really make sure for yourself as well that if you have colorful pictures most of the time it looks quite mesmerizing and cool but often it's the case that a lot of times if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. And I'll give you some tips later on on how to make sure that this is not the case for your simulations. So why do we use CFD? Uh, one thing I like to 
say about CFD is that it's something like a portable wind tunnel. So earlier on in the military, for example, is that you had an airplane and you put the airplane into the wind tunnel and then you let the air basically flow around your object or your car. It doesn't have to be like a, a bomber or a fighter, whatever, like a, fi a fighter jet. And uh, the big problem is that it's very energy consuming. And then this is the point where simulation becomes quite handy. The, the thought basically behind this is why don't we make the airplane static and let the air flow basically around our object but inside of our computer. And that's quite handy. What you can also do is to understand flow behavior which is quite critical. So that means is that you have a vacuum to clean your house for example is that you cannot look inside or make any intrusive measurements which makes it quite hard actually to uh, to measure something inside of your components that's where simulation becomes quite handy we can predict wind loads for example on the left side you can see pedestrian wind comfort analysis with and without porous media in this case porous media means with and without trees we can identify acceleration regions and also recirculation regions and we can also simulate steady state flow as well as transient to highly transient flow effects okay so the underlying principle of these simulations most of the time like the finite element method especially but also cfd is that it's the so-called divide and conquer approach what that means is that you have let's say you have uh, an object let's just take this pen ah, didn't prepare something Let's take this pen, or even better, I have something prepared, sorry. <laughs> this Rubik's Cube here, for example, which we'll need later on. And this Rubik's Cube, if you think that this is the cube, right? You can basically chop it into several pieces, and you can only focus on one particular volume. And you make some physical assumptions about this volume. For example, in CFD, we say, okay, how small do I have to make this volume to have no changes in physical properties. And once these physical properties stay constant, we usually can say, okay, um, we are small enough for our domain. In the finite element analysis, we can say, if we bend this pen, for example, we can also chop it off into finite elements, which are discrete elements, and we can make assumptions about these different pieces of elements that we have prescribed or Yes, exactly. So let's say we give some temperature to the end of the pin, which acts like a fin, for example, in this case. And then we can make some linear or quadratic assumptions about the temperature. And let's say you have a very complex distribution of the temperature. We can chop it off into pieces. And instead of having a very complex function defining our temperature distribution, we can say, OK, why not just take one element, say that is linear in this case, and then we basically have also weights in the finite element analysis, but don't worry about it too much. And we can build our function by taking linear small functions and build our complex function. I hope that makes sense. Maybe you can put it in the chat. If not, we can discuss it in the Q&A even more. So if we continuous domain is discretized, we say discretized into simple geometric shapes called cells. And we often refer to this discretized, ver discretized version of a of an object as a mesh. And as I mentioned, the volume should be so small that certain quantities stay constant. This is for, this, uh, for the CFD part. We can also say this for the FEM part, but I think it's more intuitive if we think of the finite element method in terms of approximating a function with weights and so on. And vertices slash faces, I will talk about that what it is in a few seconds, appear on the element boundaries and fasten them, so to speak, together or glue them together. So here about the terminology now, if we have a look at this cube-like object, as I just shown you, these are just definitions that you should keep in mind. And no worries, I'll put the slides on LinkedIn so you can download them afterwards and also have a look at the resources and so on. So this point at the edge is the vertex and the plural of it is vertices. We have the face, for example, as you can see, faces here. We have an edge and we have the volume, which is basically one part of the whole cube. And in this case, it's a hexahedral element and hexahedrals have 
um, eight nodes. We have six faces and 12 edges, if I'm not mistaken. Just as an example, we can also have other element types, but as for now, just make sure that you understand the terminology and the more you use it, the more you can retain the information. Awesome. Steps in the CFD analysis. So what steps do we have to take in order to perform an analysis in general? I'm just saying CFD analysis here, but it's for an analysis in general. So step zero, that's not for sim scale, it's just an analysis in general. So I will come to that in a, at a later point. That would be to define the physical problem, uh, physical problem as a mathematical model. That means if I write it down on paper, I can write down, for example, the Navier-Stokes equations, which will come to a few seconds as well, is the partial differential equation, the underlying partial differential equation for fluid flow. Apart from the Navier-Stokes equations, we have the mass conservation. And if we deal with compressible flows, we can also take the energy equation into account. Step one would be to mesh our CAD. And we usually say that our CAD is the object we are importing into SimScale and then work with it. It's basically our object. And this is referred to as the pre-processing step. Step two is to define the analysis type. That means if it's static, dynamic, multi-phase analysis, thermomechanical, so coupled thermod thermodynamical analysis with mechanical and so on, then we can specify our fluid properties and boundary conditions. That's, that's really trivial, I would say. Well, what's not trivial is defining the boundary conditions because in my opinion, that's the hardest part actually to transfer the boundary conditions from real life to the PC that it really understands what boundary conditions we have to tell the computer in order to make or create useful results. What we usually can then do is to select numerical schemes, for example, for example, solvers and interpolation schemes for the solution of our equation system. And then at the end, we can post-process our results, have a look at pressure loss gain, vorticity, forces on our structures, and so on. And to really make this more easy to grasp, because I'm a big fan of pictures, and then you will really retain the information way better now if uh, we use pictures. First of all, first of all, we have the real-world example. Then we transfer it into partial differential equations. Then we have the algebraic equations, which our computer can solve. We put it into code, we generate data from the code, and at the end, we can post-process our data and can create colorful pictures. And just as an example here, as I mentioned, here are the Navier-Stokes equations, which are in principle very easy, which basically says nothing else than mass times acceleration equals force, which is nothing else than Newton's second law of motion. And here you can really see how the Navier-Stokes equations consist of each part, for, for example, density of the fluid, change in velocity over time, and so on. No worries about the slide, you don't have to take a screenshot. I will upload everything to my Patreon as well as to LinkedIn. So a very important thing, we don't go too much into mathematics again. I just want to give you an, an insight of how complex things can become. Here we can see a drawing of Leonardo da Vinci who first describe turbulence and what is turbulence so we can name some characteristics of turbulent flows and don't feel too overwhelmed by the way i'm jumping might jump back and forth but i really want to show you what you have to take into account for a simulation and what you have to think about but we'll make it very easy and on my channel after some time we will progress so example i will do a course on turbulence then we will discuss basic fluid dynamical problems and so on so we will build our way up on my channel so no worries about that i would just want to show you what you have to think about so turbulent flow it's irregular chaotic motion as we have seen in the picture from da vinci it's a three-dimensional phenomenon and the underlying principle of the three-dimensional effect is the so-called vortex stretching effect don't worry about it too much again i just want to give you some terms and at a later point when i create some videos about turbulent flows and you hear the how the term vortex stretching you immediately think about this live stream and think, ah, okay, was three-dimensional phenomena? Okay, got it. However, turbulence can also be two-dimensional, for example, in uh, magnetohydrodynamics, just as a side information. We have enhanced mixing effects, 
and we have the so-called energy cascade. That means that energy is transported from the large scales to the small scales. And turbulent flows have the property to being very dissipative. And how can we actually define if something is turbulent? Well, Osborne Reynolds did a very nice experiment, which we'll not talk about in this live session. And he defined a dimensionless number called the Reynolds number. And it consists of the velocity scale, u, length scale, l, and kinematic viscosity, nu. And with that number that you get out, if you calculate the Reynolds number, you can basically de determine if a flow is laminar or turbulent. And we say that flow is laminar if the Reynolds number is low, whatever low means in this case. And for example, in pipe flow, we say that the critical Reynolds number is around 2300. If you take a flat plate, for example, it is 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 6. And please note that there is no sudden change from laminar to turbulent, but rather a transition. So what you can find on my channel are currently these four videos which give you a beginner's guide or a very easy introduction introduction to computational fluid dynamics where i talk a little bit more about turbulence and all these other topics but it's not very in-depth but that will come in the future no worries i will however derive very meticulously the navier stokes equations the energy equation as well as the mass continuity equation and everything can be found on my channel so just make sure to have a look and if you have any questions Feel free to put a comment below the videos and I'll make sure to reach out. So some tips for your simulation workflow. Some tips for your simulation workflow. I'm just checking out the chat. Sorry if I'm interrupting for, for, for some time. Lubricating the workflow is now our next point. Some preliminary thoughts. We have one simulation which is already finished. However, I want to give you some step-by-step -step instruction how you can make sure that you work properly. Because when I first got into simulation, I just took a pen and paper, wrote everything down, and then when I lose the paper, I basically lost all my information. So we want to make sure that you don't make the same mistake, and I'll give you some tips on how to avoid that. So first of all, make sure you prepare your geometry properly. I often see in the forum that the geometry is not properly defined. There might be some defects in the geometry, which, which is nothing bad, right? I mean, if I create a geometry, it looks most of the time very newbie or noobish, <laughs> very beginner-like, and I also make some mistakes. But one thing I want to tell you, which is very important, is that a lot of mistakes come from wrong geometries or defect geometries, let's put it that way. So very important get your geometry information, get them right, and make sure that your geometry is correct. And for example, in computational fluid dynamics, we said that the geometry has to be watertight. That means that there should be no, no defects in the geometry because the measure decides if something is an external fluid flow simulation or an internal fluid flow simulation. But if you wanna know what watertight means, we can get to that later. Also, what, are bound, what boundary conditions do you have to use? As I mentioned earlier on, let's say you have a beam, which is fixed at one end, then there's, it's very easy. You say that there's a fixed support at the end, and then we apply a force or pressure or whatever displacement at the end of the beam. And what you might have to make sure is that what you put into the computer mimics somehow the real world behavior. Also operation information, that means if I operate with a um, machine on a specific temperature and so on. These are all boundary conditions that I have to take into account, which will affect, for example, my heat transfer or whatever. So example for documentation. Let's say I have a pen and a paper, a piece of paper, and I have my simulation now. And what I can do is, for example, write down the von Mises stresses or von Mises stress in megapascal for each component one, two, three, and we have the respective Mises stresses X, Y, Z. I can do the same for the maximum deflection in millimeters, which is A, B, C in this case. And then I see, okay, C has the highest deflection and maybe Y was our highest for Mises stress, which I didn't denote or didn't put in red right now, 
but let's say the critical maximum deflection is C. Okay, if I put it on paper, I have to somehow make sure that I mark the C and so on, which is, can get quite tedious and very annoying. And if you lose your piece of paper, as I mentioned, this is quite dawn, like very annoying. So, what you can do, what I really recommend, this is now a screenshot uh, from, you can use Excel or whatever tool you like to use. However, make sure you digitalize and make sure that you work properly. You can use Excel sheet, for example, and then, sorry, and the same can be done for a CFD analysis. Let's say I have my bearing brackets from the last slide and I say bearing bracket analysis from me, June 30th, 2020. I give the name of geometry, let's say model one, model one, model two, model three, and so on. I give a name of the simulation, which is very important. Give your simulation, your mesh, your run, and so on, meaningful names. Also, when you share your project, if you use the share function on SimScale, make sure if you share the project, you have inside of your team or inside of your formula student team, a convention, which makes sure that there is no problem in understanding what, this, what version it is, what type of simulation it is, and so on. So naming is key. And then you can list everything up. For example, for a finite element analysis, also the degrees of freedom are quite important if you do a so-called mesh convergence study. I will cover that in a future video and we can discuss it if you want in the Q&A later on. The Formesis stress is quite important and also deflection and you can use other things. For example, in CFD, you can use your forces, average pressure, pressure loss if you want and so on. As I mentioned, naming tips, Give every geometry, boundary condition, run, mesh, result control item, and so on, meaningful names. It's very important because sometimes people share their projects with me. I have a look at it and I'm like, okay, that's a bit um, unlucky. <laughs> stick to convention, make it clear with a legend. I stick to convention, I mean naming convention. And if it's not clear, make it sure you put some legend inside of your Excel sheet to make sure that everything which could be unclear is clear. And as I mentioned, important for collaborations. Just a short interruption right now to see if everything works. Let me just give one second to make sure I put in my power supply. One moment. So I'm back, sorry, very, very beginner mistake because I have so many cables on my table. Anyway, um, I hope, let's take a pause and ponder and think for a bit. I hope you didn't miss me for like one minute. Anyway, let's, let's keep going. Analysis steps number one. If you have any questions, by the way, in the meantime, just put them in the comment section or in the chat function. You can even use a super chat or whatever if you like, and then I'll get back to you. So analysis tip, step, step number one. Some of you might know the KISS principle. So keep it simple, stupid. Mine sound harsh, but um, it just means just start very simple. Don't overcomplicate it, like do complex boundary conditions and so on. Put uh, complex geometry inside of it unless it's necessary. Make sure to start with a very basic model and then build your way up in terms of complexity. That's what I mean with KISS. So don't feel offended by it. I also do the mistake, but no, I, I think you get what I mean. A good first mesh is very important, so make sure to have a first good mesh and don't work with a mesh which has a lot of erroneous issues inside of it. So make sure you have a good first mesh and once you have a good first mesh, you can keep working with that good mesh. So 
Also, you take this mesh, agree to the mesh, and then use this mesh to sweep, to do simulation sweep, if you want to call it like that, with this mesh. And of course, I don't mean with, if you have one mesh, keep it for like every simulation. Let's say we have a finite element simulation. You have to make sure that we start course. That's also KISS principle, you remember? Start course and then build your way up, make it a little bit finer, a little bit finer, once you see a mesh convergence. If you don't know what mesh convergence mean, uh, means, no worries, we, we can discuss it later on. And also, no simulation rampage. What do I mean by that? That means is that if you have one simulation and you think the mesh is quite good, the boundary conditions are fine and so on, don't create multiple simulation runs and then at the end, once everything is finished, you see, oh, oh my God, I made a mistake. And how can I revert the mistake? Well, it's too late because you have sent all the runs in, in the case of SimScale to the server and they've already been finished. You can, of course, cancel runs or interrupt runs. But if you have sent every simulation that you want to do to the server, go away, drink coffee, take a nap, come back, everything is finished. You cannot revert it. Your core hours are basically gone. It's wasted, wasted core hours, wasted money in the worst case, but also your precious time. So we'll start with one simulation. If that's good, keep going forward. Okay. And as always, check results. If these results are good, make sure to continue. And with check results, I also mean sanity checks. I take my pen again. If I have a fixed support here and I bend it, and if I see at the end that the deflection is not few millimeters or even point whatever millimeters, but maybe five meters, there might be something wrong. If I have a small beam and the deflection is five meters, there might be something wrong with your boundary conditions. So make sure you do some sanity checks. Also, go back to the simulation, adapt the boundary conditions if necessary or anything else that might be related to this high deflection and then move on from there. Analysis tips, step number two. As I mentioned, no simulation rampage. That was step number two. If you do simulation in the processing step, again, check the results. I have to repeat myself. I know it's kind of maybe repetitive, but we have to really make sure that you make sure to check your results because I often see also in university when I teach people finite element analysis and so on, that they don't check the results. They just have a solution and they think the computer does the job for them. So really make sure to also use human common sense to make sure um, everything is all right. Step number, step number three is to create runs for every combination you want to have. Now the problem here is that if you create runs for every simulation, that can be quite bad, I would say, because if you create runs for every combination possible, let's say you have, and I take my pen again, my lovely pen, you apply a force on it. Now you say you want to start with a force of 2 Newton, which might be nothing, but just for, for the sake of explanation, it's 2 Newton. And then you say, I want to go up to 50 Newton. You can go through steps of, let's say, 1 Newton. So you say 2 Newton, then I increase it, 3 Newtons, 4, 5, 6, until 50. That's a lot of simulation runs. What you can do instead is so-called a design of experiments. What you can do then is you take only the 2 Newton and the worst case, in this case 50 Newton, and then see how the structure behaves. And if there are any, prob if there are any problems, you can get back, make some adaptions. And if you really need the values in between, you can still do that. So to save you time, core hours and so on, you can use the lowest number of your parameter space and the highest number of your parameter space. And then you only have two options instead of plenty of options which lie in between. I hope that makes sense. Step number four, post-processing. You can do that either online on SimScale or offline using Paraview, for example. And also here, if you do post-processing and evaluate the results, for example, Mises stress, pressure, forces, and so on, use Excel or any other tool that you are convenient working with or that you feel convenient working with to make sure you have really no, no problem in, uh, in accessing the data later on. And as I mentioned, make sure to give it meaningful names. And here, my uh, last point, sanity check. So 
use common sense and use your engineering knowledge or like really common sense to to see if that's what you what's coming out of a simulation actually makes sense okay and also if you have outliers um, you can make sure to mark them in your Excel sheet. Let's say you have this very high and exorbitant amount of deflections at some point and there is some kind of um, problem inside of your data space or data that you acquired in your Excel sheet. Make sure to mark them red and you either go to the problem right once you encounter the problem and try to find out what the problem could be, which I recommend by the way, or you mark it red, get back to the problem later on and continue working if you are in a kind of working flow state you know really focused instead of like being very angry and trying to find out or debugging the your debugging your simulation just go and move on with your work and then come back to a later point so before we wrap things up potential future video topics and i want to hear from you what you want to see so uh, i didn't have too much too many requests but one of course would be that I do a turbulence beginner's guide and later on I will do a turbulence course at a later point but I'm very busy at the moment so we can do it with the first turbulence beginner's guide if you have any other suggestions let me know in the chat and also in the comments we can discuss the ominous topic of what are wall functions and why do we even need y plus if we do for example a CFD analysis what are these wall functions what does fully resolved mean and so on can get quite annoying but I'll make sure to cover that if you like. Then a very cool case is if we have a convection diffusion problem, the so-called Pickle number, what it means. And this is also quite useful if you want to understand stability analysis. What is the so-called CFL number, so Courant Friedrichs Levy number. That would be quite interesting. And as I promised, if I hit a certain threshold of um, subscribers, we can do a CFD course on how to use open form, like from beginner to intermediate because i'm not an expert so we can only go to intermediate i would say and we also discussed how to properly manage a cfd project so we could do a separate video on that one i can show you step by step how to manage a cfd project or fem project and i can make sure to um, give you an excel sheet um, let's say i upload it to patreon you can download it from there and then you can use it for your projects and very cool is also a post-processing course for cfd where I can show you how you can use Paraview, for example, or if you're interested in using post-processing online, how you can use that for your analysis. Okay. What I want to announce also now, you, so you're the first ones who are listening to that, like you are listening to that, you are the first ones who um, get the information. I want to start a Simulation Sunday series Simulation Sunday because it's like an alliteration, it sounds good, and rolls off the tongue quite well. So Simulation Sunday is serious. And uh, what we can do is like every few weeks, because I'm currently writing my thesis, so maybe not every two weeks, which might be a quit, quite hard because I want to make it evidence-based. That means if I do a pump simulation, we will have a look at papers that exist from ResearchGate and every, some other locations on the internet. And we have some evidence-based analysis of example. So evidence-based usually comes from the field of medicine. We have evidence-based medicine, but I called it evidence-based because we use some resources, make sure not to only run a simulation. And um, that's also one of the reasons I do not like to give you a demo today, like just clicking around and showing, hey, you can do this, you can do that with a simulation, because it doesn't make any sense. If you want to understand simulation, we have to interact. I have to give you some some fundamentals about simulation so that you understand what is this uh, CFL number? What does it mean physically? What does it mean if I have a too high cell number? Can it, can it be too low? And so on. I hope you, you understand what I mean. And what we'll do is me, we mix it between easy and advanced examples. So what we can do is we start again here, my, my, my pen, my, my good friend, the pen. We can start with a simple bending beam. And as you know from engineering mechanics, we can use some uh, differential equations to describe the uh, the nature of this bending or the deflection and then we can see does the simulation really give the same result as our engineering mechanics formula for example give us and then we can see okay what do i have to tweak in my simulation setup so that it is roughly in a margin like an error margin of like five percent or so but we can talk about that if you like also 
if you want to support the channel and I have to make a short advertisement here <laughs> if you want to support the channel you can go to my patreon page donates like a very few like one dollar or something you can also depending on the tier you can download the slide which uh, is in PDF format but this slide from this presentation will be uploaded to LinkedIn and Patreon for free so you can get it for free and depending on in which tier you are we can have virtual meetings every week or every month you can have a look at the Patreon page in case you have questions about career and so on you can have access to every material so if I am doing AI series or simulation series or also programming series about MATLAB so I'm doing something very cool in the future but I'm not don't want to talk too much about it so MATLAB series about how you can program like a system for finite elements and you can also access my AI sheets which are recent uh, like recently started so what is feed forward, feed forward network for example and so on if you have any ideas what uh, what you would like to see in the Patreon tiers just let me know so here are the sources and with that being said we make like a one minute break or so and I look in the chat and I'll make sure to answer you and after that I'll show you around what you can do on the SimScale page. Okay let me just see what you wrote in the comments. Let's go through it. First of all welcome. Okay we start with, let me just go through the comments. Dawson, hello from Michigan, USA, studying mechanical engineering. Awesome. Alejandro, if I pronounce it correctly, Venezuelan, very nice. Currently in Spain, studying mechanical engineering. Welcome. Igneus Racing, hi Tom, nice to see you here. Rohit, studying mechanical engineering from India. Uh, Indians are like my biggest followers, so that's cool. Brazil, studying mechanical engineering. Emmanuel. North London, India, Aerospace Engineering, Aritra studying Mechanical Engineering from Drift Racing Team, that's what I know. Naval, Engin Naval Architect, that's cool, Eri, that's awesome. Um, Navy Stokes is such a mess, <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, also from India, Hi Pandyan. Wall functions, please. Yeah, wall functions. Well, I think we should cover wall functions and what it actually means. Turbines, please. We can do turbines as well. Yes, simulation Sunday sounds good. Um, very good, very good. MATLAB Zero to Hero is the best. Yeah, that's good uh, that you mentioned it, Rohit. Um, I actually wanted to continue the series, but I have something uh, what I'm working on right now because it's getting quite hard to uh, to work on the MATLAB series at the moment. But I want to make sure to have something bigger and put that up on my channel. So not to have like every five weeks a MATLAB video because I'm also doing the podcast and so on. So, um, yeah. So any questions in the meantime? I think our peak was 48, 48 visitors today. Um, let me just... Discuss them. Yep. Mm. Let me also put my LinkedIn LinkedIn link in the chat so that you can find me. One moment. So connect with me here if you aren't connected already. Um, what you can also do is Follow me on Instagram. So I haven't prepared a bot. I could theoretically uh, activate a bot on my live stream, which would push like links every few minutes. But I think it would just be an overkill. I'm not streaming that often. And here on Twitter. So if you want to make sure to, to keep in touch with me, I'm most active on Twitter slash Instagram. So make sure to follow me there. So what we will do now, um, and if you have any questions in the meantime, just put them in the chat. Now I can actually see the chat. When I had the, uh, the presentation, I couldn't see it. So maybe it would make sense to make it a bit bigger now. Yeah. I think you can still hear me perfectly well, right? Already connected. Yeah, cool, Sandish. Thanks for thanks for connecting with me, and also make sure to invite your friends. By the way, so 
if they want to get in touch with me also if they have any questions regarding um, career if you want to work for SimScale and so on you can always reach out to me um, I cannot give like a full uh, training on what to do and so on but uh, I can give you like who to contact and so on some tips so yeah so far about that um, that was just an example and here's the SimScale website so let's just have a quick demo on what you can find on the SimScale website just a primer and before that Alejandro had a question how should one approach if one wants to get into CFD do you focus strictly on the programming get designed from someone or do you make the design like if you want to get into CFD I don't think a lot of people start with coding like straight into coding but you can do it of course um, in university it was like just theory first and then you build your way up yeah but you don't have to necessarily start with programming okay if we're on the simskill website right now and it will be very quick so uh, i mean you can basically play around so there is no strict rule on how to use the website but what I want to show you is if you have any questions about a product, you can go to the product here on the SimScale website. You can have plenty of learning resources. And one that I really like is you can go to the documentation. And in the documentation, you can find some validation cases, which you can have a look at here. And what I really like is the tutorials, which are also up to date. So if we want to, for example, have a look at thermal management, you can have a look at that and work your way through it so that's very convenient so that you can see on the right upper corner i'm already logged in and i can go to my dashboard and the focus here is really to have give you a prime on how to optimally work so make sure to use the learning resources but also the forum so if you want to go to the forum you can go to the forum um, and you can see for example here spam and uh, make sure to make use of the search function so let's say you want to learn something about final element method and here you can see this is one of my earlier posts where i posted some things about the final element method some facts are outdated but you can have a look at that so what i want to say is make sure to use the search function and someone might have already covered this point so this is my dashboard which is something like a workspace and what you can do is you find all your projects here so people who shared your projects with you you can find the shared ones right here you can find your own projects and depending on what plan you have for example academic or professional you can see this private private thingy here which means that i can set my project to private and this is actually set to private okay you can also, let's say you know the name of, of your um, simulation, then you can type it in here. You can also sort it by watch, many likes, number of shares, and so on. So just to make sure that you have it properly set up, also make sure, for example, as I meant with meaningful names, just make sure to give your simulation meaningful names because sometimes what I see in the public project section is that a lot of people don't have meaningful names and it can get quite tedious to have to look the projects up if you don't give them proper names. Also, very important tip is use the public projects. What do I mean by that? Let's say you want to have a look at, let's say, static analysis of, or let's say pump analysis. Let's just take that for example. You have this pump analysis by my colleague Ali. Ali. And what you can do is, if you have no idea how to start a pump analysis, you can open the project, have a look at the setup, and then make sure to reverse engineer this project. That means that you can basically take this setup of Ali, have a look how he set it up, and then have another tab with your own pump, which has might have a slightly different design, and then adapt your simulation according to what um, Ali did in terms of boundary conditions, Re, uh, result control outputs and so on so i hope that makes sense also if you need any help you have the tutorials right here and you have the documentation as i mentioned so the documentation is becoming better and better over time so make sure to check it out and you can also use the chat function in the lower right corner 
here, right here. So it says, hi, Yusuf, and I can send the message. You can see that my colleagues Richard, Ricardo, or Jacob could theoretically answer me. And I can send some message like, I have a problem with my simulation, can you help me out? And if you're an academic user, you will be forwarded to me, which might take some time until I get back to you, or someone of my colleagues who are very fast in supporting people on SimScale will get back to you. So I'm very proud of the support team, so make sure if you have any problems, reach out via chat. But I would personally recommend, first make sure to check out the forum. Don't rush into the chat, because um, there might be someone who actually covered your problem already. So that's what I wanted to say. Do you have any other questions, anything else you would like to see? Because just showing you around the website wouldn't make too much sense because you can basically check it out yourself. But I want to give you a, like a few tips on how to approach things. Also, when it comes to the dashboard, one important thing is have a look at your core hours. And also have a look how many core hours are remaining so that you have a rough estimate. Um, okay, I have that many core hours remaining. You can also see in your, if you go to profile or manage account, um, how many core hours you already consumed for which project and so on. Um, with that being said, do you have any questions, any wishes for future videos? I mean, we have wall functions, of course, which I can cover. That That's a good one for sure. And it doesn't need actually too much uh, fluid mechanics knowledge, I would say. So, so we are covered there. see if you have any questions questions or comments face change okay um, the thing is that face change is currently not possible there might be a workaround on sim scale um, but I think you mean with face change like um, in, in terms of a presentation right like a beginner's guide of uh, face change I want to use machine learning to simulation. How do I go forward? Yeah. Vignesh asks about machine learning. That's a good thing that you mentioned it. Um, I have two podcasts recorded, which go a bit into detail, how to use deep learning for fluid flow prediction, but also um, how to approach fluid flow simulation with um, other methods. So uh, look, looking forward to publish them. Might take a bit, but... Um, Yeah, Saul is asking post-processing video would be helpful. Yeah, I will probably do one for online post-processing and one for offline post-processing, depending on the workload. Some tips on weighted function. Um, do you meet with weighted function in terms of finite element method, Sandish? Artur is asking, prepare surface on sim scale. Um, yeah, I would personally recommend there are some tools, for example, something called the imprint functionality that is available on SimScale. And you can check out the documentation for CAD preparation. There are some tools available, which might be useful. However, if you need to make some bigger changes to the surface, I would suggest you maybe use your own CAD tool or, for example, use Onshape, which is um, CAD counterpart also cloud-based um, a cat counterpart for SimScale, right it's also cloud-based cfd for drones th that's a good question it's also very interesting how do i begin in SimScale? we have some something on the forum we have a drone workshop actually which however is a bit outdated so drone simulation just using the search function again and here you can see there was a drone workshop in 2015 and um, Milad was hosting it, so my old colleague. And there we covered structural design of drones, as far as I know, also fluid flow of drones. So you can have a look at that. If it's outdated, if you want me to cover it in a Simulation Sunday video, which wouldn't be that much evidence-based because I think it's quite hard to find papers on CFD for drones, I would assume. I think there are a few, but... Um, it isn't that it's like machine learning where you have like millions of papers. Um, yeah. But if you want me to cover that, I can do that as well. Uh, 
Ja, yeah. ja, yeah, Aritra ist saying formal student session. Ja, yeah. ja. Yeah. The thing is, is that a lot of people have the misconception that this channel, like my channel, is somehow affiliated to Simscale, which is not the case, by the way. So everything on my channel, everything I say on my channel, is my opinion, and that's something I do for myself. So if I use Simscale, I use Simscale because, first of all, <laughs> I cannot use anything else because I have a contract, which states. Um, not using like other products in, in terms of simulation. Um, but also, if you are a student and even in the times of pandemic, as you have seen, and where hardware becomes, and hardware is quite expensive, and having access to hardware was quite expensive, um, cloud-based simulation technology definitely makes sense. And I think you really felt that during the pandemic, and even, even now, I mean, it's not over, right? Yeah, yeah the videos are outdated. By the way, um, also regarding the outdated videos and training material, everything on the SimScale Academy, except the professional training, will be taken down. And I will work on, depending on my time schedule, because I'm, I'm very busy, um, I will try to convert it into my own stuff, own presentation, and then make a session out of it. So that these drones, uh, maybe post-processing, and so on. So to make sure that you are covered not only using SimScale, but also have a understanding beyond SimScale. What 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 is the CFL number? Not only clicking buttons, uh, but also really understanding how can I interpret my results from SimScale, but also how can I understand the physics behind it? And that's really what I um what I'm what I'm aiming to do. Yeah. And and I hope you learned some stuff, some new stuff in the in the live session. Um, maybe you can give me some feedback. So, did you like the live session? And um, you can find every link on my channel. Um, yeah, also in under the video, but also in case I just I just put it in the chat. If you want to support the podcast, the channel, and so on to make ourselves grow, because I have to mention it explicitly. Everything that I make on Patreon and any other resources, even for my work, I put everything into the channel because the goal really is, and it might sound maybe a bit insane, but the goal really is to have the highest quality possible on YouTube and cover a wide variety of engineering topics, but also AI topics and educate people in the field of CFD, FEA, engineering in general, artificial intelligence, because that's uh, that's the electricity new electricity of our century and so on uh, i really hope you enjoyed it that's so cool thanks for the feedback really appreciate it um as i mentioned uh, you can contact me uh, via social media and uh, roof asks do you have a discord server yes i have um let me just post a link there and in the meantime while i look for the link uh, Aditya, uh, how is SimScale different from other cloud te technologies? Uh, there's, there's pros and cons. So, um, I mean, you can decide it for yourself at the end of the day, but user experience is really one of the first points I have to mention. User experience is quite good, at least in my opinion. Of course, I wouldn't say we have the perfect product, but we built our way towards, we, like we're converging, let's put it in engineering terms, we're converging to a, to a, um, optimal product let's put it that way um, yeah let me just have a look at the link from discord I'm not good at multitasking by the way so if I just talk any weird stuff just let me know uh, discord is this link let me just put it in the live chat thank you very much for the feedback guys and um, as I mentioned, if you want to support me, just connect with me, visit Patreon. If you can identify yourself with one of the tiers and you want to support the channel, uh, make sure to do so. And um, that would be really cool. Um, as I mentioned, I everything I I don't buy like uh, fancy watches or stuff like that. So everything will be put back to have higher productivity value for you guys. And also, it's like... How I like to call it is, um, how is it called? Um, I forgot the word, how is it called? 
Ähm, egoistic altruism, right? Egoistic altruism, which means I want to... I want to, of course, reach my goal like for 50,000 subscribers, maybe 1 million, let's see. But I also want to give back to the community because I think there's there's some good content out there, but the quality is bad. I have to, I have to honestly say, and yeah, I just want to give you the best experience possible. And that's what I'm really re looking forward to do. I'm improving my podcasts, my teaching skills and so on. I'm really working hard to make sure that our channel, because it's our channel, because without you, this wouldn't be possible because you watch me. And that we grow as a community and really um, that we grow together and create something really big and uh, maybe even a movement might sound like stupid, <laughs> but um, that's my goal and I stick to it. And uh, no matter what everyone else says, we can do this. I'm quite sure about that. Sure, I uh, accept every request on Instagram if, and so on if you follow me. Just contact me, send me some messages, feedback in general. Awesome. Kabe, ciao, thank you so much. And Aritra, thank you so much for the feedback. And if you don't have any more questions, I would say we can close this kind kind of short session, which was only one hour and six minutes. I'm, I'm waiting for a few seconds. And then, uh, yeah. Also, one thing, I know you might be annoyed of the, of the uh, <laughs> advertisement, but... If you want to go to Patreon and support me, you can. You are also the first ones who get updates what I'm working on and so on. So uh, I have some big plans, also in terms of longer videos, which even go beyond two, three hours in terms of tutorials. Um, and if you want to keep up to date, or be up to date with my latest um, things I do, uh, make sure to post uh, to to follow me on Patreon if you like. And also, I thought about doing vlogs about my thesis. I'm not sure how vlog how, how much you like vlogs. Also to improve my editing skills, which I think have improved over time. But as I mentioned, I want to be like the top guy in, in, in education in terms of uh, editing. Even if I have to, uh, if I can beat and I see have, to, have to beat 3Blue1Brown, who has a lot of subscribers. Aditya, thank you so much. I, I hope it will. I hope it will. We have to reach 50,000 subscribers this year. This is this is the goal. Even if it's like unrealistic at first, um, I'm hoping that through my work, for you guys who watch, but also the YouTube uh, Mr. Algorithm, if uh, is in my favor, we can we can see how, how things go. And I hope I wasn't too fast, by the way, uh, during the presentation. That's one of my... Uh, skills I, I'm not good at so cool really really it was really cool to see you um, see a lot of you on, on in this live stream by the way Adobe videos thank you so much big niche I appreciate it <laughs> thank you so much yeah Let, let's create a movement and then at some point we can uh, we can have some merch and <laughs> call ourselves whatever engineer your mind army or whatever. <laughs> that would be fun. And I will most likely, although I had some issues with my power supply, I will most likely um, leave this live session up. And the things how I approach it is, if I'm not satisfied with the quality, I usually take things down. Uh, but I think the quality today was quite good, I think. But as it is with uh, the hedonic treadmill, this good becomes at some point normal. And then um, I, I become hopefully better over time. Yeah, Nivit, if you're interested in uh, in CFD, um, make sure to check out my videos about CFD, Beginner's Guide, where we'll scratch the surface of what CFD is capable of. Um, yeah. If you subscribe to my engineering videos, that's great. But if you would also watch the podcast, which I'd highly encourage you to do, because AI plus any other field is like enormously helpful. Like it doesn't have to be every field. Like you don't have to apply AI to everything, like some of people do it. But I think if you have at least a basic understanding, like I do, like I have a basic understanding. I'm not a 
an expert in AI. Um, but having a variety of interests to help you leverage your knowledge in one field to another field um, and give you some uh, additional synapses, <laughs> that would be like super good. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of annoying with the, with the pandemic. That's right. But 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 don't feel too um, too too down. Make sure to make use of the pandemic. Uh, acquire a skill. For example, what I do is I'm currently taking a class on Coursera. Uh, if I vlog, you will see it that I take a course from Coursera, which is uh, named so on, um, which is about um, how to speak or how to speak publicly better because at some point I will have to do my master thesis presentation of course and what I see also professors do is like they make it very let's say um, not very entertaining and for me the lecture lecture is kind of too boring and then I leave so what I make to do is make it entertaining make it interesting and make it as good as possible so that you guys get so much knowledge out of it that, that's my goal and if you learn if you can learn something out of it a lot of or even a lot of, out of it and which is useful for your later career, I have done my job. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to help you guys out. The podcast on AI is awesome. Thank you so much, Aditya. I appreciate it. Um, Shri is asking, can you make one on lithium ion cell CFD? I can have a look at it if we can make it happen. Um, is it more on the ther thermal dynamical side? Then we could even use something like thermal packaging or so, which which could be done. That would be possible. So I'm, I'm staying a few minutes here until uh, there's almost nobody here. Then uh, we can end the stream if there are no any more questions. And by the way, the next um, next video will be a podcast. Will be a podcast with um, an engineering company focusing on CFD solutions right um, other plans I have let's see um, that was that video then I also have my 5000 subs Q&A ah, that's what I have to say please send me questions for the 5000 Q&A uh, celebration to my socials um, via DM and I will make sure to cover them and I will also mention your name for example that Ahmed Hussein says thanks I can say Ahmed Hussein asked hey uh, what's your point or what's your opinion on AI what's your opinion on Elon Musk for example whatever uh, and then I can uh, put your name inside and then I can cover it um, Girish asks, says um, that's very difficult to acquire knowledge about CFD yeah Actually, there are a lot of good videos from Indians uh, discussing CFD and algorithms and so on, which I basically forgot how this kind of stuff works, like pimple and so on. So I have to rewatch all of that. But the quality is not very good. And that's where I come in. I want to make sure that you get your knowledge about engineering, CFD, FEA and so on and are really prepared for the real world. Let's put it that way. Sure, Aditya. Thank you so much. Like, trusty, trusty mate. Yeah, and the, the Girish, that's that's a good point that you mentioned, and that's where cloud-based simulation technology comes in, right? So you create an account on SimScale, and you can use the cloud-based simulation technology to to run your simulations there. In case you can, because not every simulation type is supported from SimScale, which is a disadvantage, but um. You cannot do everything. You cannot be good in everything, to be honest. Awesome. Was such uh, was a record, by the way. We almost had 50, 50 viewers in this live stream. Really, really appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, Girish, no worries about um, about money or like that you don't have a proper computer. I will do some tutorials with uh, with a SimScale and so on, how you can leverage your your knowledge or use my knowledge or my videos to increase your 
productivity slash knowledge um, also to make sure you become a better engineer in CFD. So no worries about that. Thank you so much, Aditya. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm very flattered uh, with all this kind of su support that you that you give me. Um, if, if you want to support me, as um, you don't have to necessarily, if you cannot spend the money, don't go to Patreon. I explicitly say that. So if you cannot or want, don't want to spend $1, if it's too much for you because you're living in a, in a country where $1 is actually very much, don't do it, please. Only if you can, if you're not if you're not needing the money feel free to support me if not i'm completely fine if you only watch my videos comment on them and share them with your friends and invite them to subscribe to my channel that would be that would be cool i'm i'm not mad at all <laughs> potato pc that's a good one yeah i also have one potato pc um in my somewhere on the floor <laughs> But luckily, everything becomes cheaper over time, right? Because of Moore's law and so on. Yeah, Rohit, Rohit says it. Some, yeah. You can basically get started with SimScale and learn a lot from there. And um, the team is currently working on updating every document uh, so, like everything that's already in the documentary, uh, the documentation. Sorry, uh, what do I say? Documentary the documentation, right? So uh, feel free to check it out. And if you find anything that's outdated, because I will take everything down from the SimScale Academy. So, and Aritraya, if if one dollar is too much, don't um, go to don't go to Patreon and support me there, but just keep commenting because what's very impo important is commenting and liking and sharing um incre I, I put it in the chat increases um uh like <coughs> oh sorry a typo <coughs> Sorry. So if you comment, if you like, and if you share the videos, the algorithm will notice that and it will actually increase the, the likelihood or the possibility or the probability that the algorithm will push my channel. So make sure if you if I have a new video, even if you don't watch it like completely, because sometimes podcasts go for almost two hours, which is really a long time. I cannot even watch two hours. Like if I watch Joe Rogan, for example, I have to do it like step by step and discrete steps. Let's put it let's put it that way. Uh, just leave a comment, give it a like, and then you can, if you want, watch it at a later point, or you can leave if you like. Get, Gabriela, that's a good good uh, point. The SimCal is not optimized for mobile for mobile devices, or let's say you have an iPad. But uh, what you can do is there is a section on uh, SimScale called product feedback in the forum. Put your idea there. I'll comment on it and I'll forward it to our um, product team, and they will see where it fits and maybe if it's already in in, in the pipeline in terms of development. Um, by the way, Ahmed asked where I am from, right? I missed that. Yeah, Ahmed, I'm from Germany and I was also born in Germany. I hope that that, that answers your question. Uh, Vignesh, what do you mean with course name? Thermal management simulation. Uh, yeah, I think we could, we could do something about that. Maybe thermal packaging, something like that, which already exists. I can use that template. And we can go a little bit more into depth. Um, the best, of course, would be if we can validate something, right? Like for example, the bending beam, and you know this is the deflection. This is the that that's what the formula says. That's what the simulation predicts. Then we can see what the error margin is. Um, and Girish also says, yeah, 64 gigabytes are like, yeah, and even 12 cores. Um, by the way. Um, 
yeah, what I would basically do is sign up for SimScale. If you, however, cannot run the simulations that you intend to do on SimScale, you can use you can basically inform yourself on how to use something like servers, for example, uh, some instances using Amazon Web Services, but that can also become quite costly. I'm not sure if it's really feasible. Um, yeah. Go Germany. Okay, we've, we've still, we have 24 uh, visitors, still. Okay, any other question guys? Or questions? Uh, Pandyan is asking, are you giving any MATLAB program coding? Yeah, good question Pandyan. I have, and I mentioned it, uh, I know it's getting quite annoying if I say that, but I'm quite busy uh, with my thesis, work, YouTube, recording podcasts, meeting people online to record the podcast and so on. It's, um, but I have something planned for MATLAB, which is going to be bigger. And I thought about giving it away for free in the sense of uploading it to my channel. Because if I upload a podcast once a week, let's say, and then I have to upload a MATLAB video once a week. Then I have two videos a week, which is also very heavy in terms of workload. Then I want to upload a, a vlog, how I write on my thesis, how I study in real time, productivity tips and so on. And maybe because I have a lot of ideas also in terms of funny videos, like um, sitting down with my computer, um, how is it to be like an engineer? And so I have all, every idea written down. So in order to give myself a bit more free time, I thought about investing like a huge chunk of my time into creating a MATLAB course, putting it on YouTube, and this will, promise me, this will be the best MATLAB course on YouTube. And I promise it to you. I'm, I'm already drafting everything out. I didn't, I didn't record anything so far, but it will be like long with timestamps. If you want to support the, the MATLAB vlog and have additional material, you can spend some money on it. Like for example, on Udemy, I haven't thought it out or maybe I have my own platform at that point. Uh, but if you wanna have the basic MATLAB course, it's completely for free. If you wanna have additional materials like learning materials, PDFs and so on, you can spend like 20, 30 euros or so. I haven't figured it out yet, but I have something in my head and then get it on Udemy slash my own platform. I hope that that makes sense and you're really looking forward to that Pandian. And it will cover everything. How do I install MATLAB? How do I get started? How do I clear clear command window? Close figures, create figures. Like I will have a huge session only on plots, 2D plots, 3D plots, 4D, 5D, which, which exists by the way. Um, then it's a matter of interpretation. How do you interpret 5D plots? Um, that will come and I have it drafted already and uh, trust me, it's going to be so damn good. However, there's a psychological effect. If I say I will put it out, then the brain thinks I already have done the work. So I'm getting lazy. That's what I didn't want to say it, but um, really looking forward for that. And, and I'm working with someone else on another course, uh, which hopefully might come in the near future. But as I mentioned, I'm, I'm quite caught up with other work. Aditya is asking more podcasts on AI in the future. <clears throat> yes, definitely. Um, there will be AI, AI plus engineering, only AI, uh, and have some 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 cool stuff really, uh, where knowledgeable people give you give you um, insight on what actually happens uh, in the field of artificial intelligence. So I already recorded like fifteen to twenty more podcasts, which have to be uploaded and edited. But editing takes me like like editing, um, like if we take editing, recording, scheduling the meeting. Uh, and so on every that whole logistic thing it takes me one day like a whole day to actually produce one podcast which is like 
uh, enormous but i'm really looking forward that once again traction we will blow up and then we have this big army of of um, engineers and soon to be engineers ai enthusiasts enthusiasts and so on and um, there are some courses like aircraft workshop drone workshop etc even a couple of courses by you yes exactly there's um however some of those which are outdated will be taken down uh, at the end of the month and i will take everything that has been in the, in the academy rework it put some more formulas inside of it and um, make it really more easier to grasp because some wor workshops slash trainings can definitely be improved and then you will see it on my channel cfd on internal combustion engine um Girish, that's a good question, and I'm also interested in, in that, actually. Um, when it comes to combustion, there will be a lecture in the future, in the far future, <laughs> where, we'll where I will talk about combustion engines, how they work. Uh, and I even have a cool project in mind how to really explain it very well. Um, but CFD for internal combustion engines, then you would have to use another package, which is specialized for combustion processes, which SimScale cannot do. So... But once I have this in mind, uh, time changes, um, maybe at that point I can use another tool which uh, deals with internal combustion. Um, maybe we can find a workaround there. I hope that somehow answers your question. It wasn't really answered, but... <laughs> so... Uh, with that being said, I would say we can close things if you want. If you have no other questions, do you want to have more live streams in the future, or like more videos? <laughs> what? What's? I think more videos, right? But I do some live streams from time to time if I announce something. Uh. For masters in computer science, both universities are quite good. So T TU Berlin or TU Munich, they are they're quite good. Um, Girish, the thing is, is that I don't have the answer to to this question because uh, every question is or every answer to the question is contextual. That means, how is the work work demand for internal combustion engines in your country where you want to work? Um, where you live and so on so it's always contextual so there isn't that one answer when i say yeah do internal combustion engine cfd simulation and then you don't get an internship or a job in that field um that wouldn't be good and i wouldn't feel good about it so what i would say is um follow or what i always say is follow your passion and then and if you're really good at it money will eventually follow and I think that's, that also applies for this channel, for example. If we, if we become, as a collective group, become very good in communicating, supporting each other, um, as I mentioned, like this so-called um, egoistic altruism. So being egoistic, following your own goals and wanting to see yourself fulfilling your own goals, but also helping others, I think that that has a huge leverage effect. That's it's enormous. Because what I see is if you help people doesn't doesn't matter if it's like for a few bucks or even for free for free is even better but of course you cannot live only from love and, and air how you say in germany um if you support people in general you will get it back you will really get it back and uh, it's, it's a really good feeling so we have to support each other i support you with tips uh, in terms of career development if you have t uh, questions about how to apply for, for sim skill for examples and so on um yeah yeah as i mentioned helping each other um in india it's difficult in cfd engines i i see engines yeah that's that's a problem um but as you can see have a look i'm not a big fan of news like i'm not watching television or anything like that but have a look at the news like uh, just uh, internet is sufficient enough that things like quantum computing 3d printing artificial intelligence these are the 
most hyped things right now. It doesn't have to mean that you ju have to jump on the hype train and say, yeah, I want to do artificial intelligence and uh, earn like 100,000 a year. Um, if you live in San Francisco, by the way, 100,000 a year isn't that much. So, um, but follow something that has potential in the future. And optimally also um, that there's an overlap with your passion and I think th that's the best way to, to do it. Maybe what you can do is artificial intelligence plus internal combustion engines. If you can find something there or do your research in there, I mean, if you're um, curious about that, why not? Yeah, turbochart, it's super interesting, Girish. I, I like these topics as well. I'm a little bit of a car enthusiast myself. And uh, I'm... If I, if I can get more money in from YouTube, uh, as I mentioned, I don't spend it on like fancy stuff, which I don't need, like watches and so on, which is like crazy. I will reinvest it in actually getting the um, the components, uh, like, like for, for example, the turbocharger. And I can really see you, instead of just showing you a CAD model, I can show you a real example of a turbocharger. Uh, where's the air intake? How does the turbine look like inside of the turbocharger? So it's, it's all in my head. It's all planned out um, and actually my to-do to -do list for YouTube is like 15 pages long uh, with entertainment, AI, podcast, series and so on. But everything step by step and will grow and as, um, as Aritra mentioned um, as a collective group, we will grow together because it's not about me because without the subscribers I would basically be non-existent on YouTube. So it's always a give, take, give, take process. That's an iterative process, so to speak. So just to repeat what I said in the presentation. <laughs> Hope that makes makes sense. Um, and don't don't be um, too upset if I maybe upload a funny video because I have some funny videos in my in my head or like re reviewing the MacBook Pro, which I'm currently working on, doing a, some shots on that and giving my own opinion. Don't be too mad about it and like giving it a thumbs down. Um, just inhale it if you want and yeah just if you want watch it because actually I'm not doing the reviews to annoy you guys that's the important thing I'm doing the reviews to um, increase my English skills increase my presentation skills uh, also up upgrade my editing skills um, because as I mentioned I'm like super obsessed like literally obsessed with pushing on YouTube, like becoming the best educational channel that can be. Um, and I know there's a lot of competition, but I, 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 can, I can make sure to, to um, overtake them. Fun is a part of life, that, that's well put. Hi from Russia. I cannot read your name, by the way. I'm, uh, I'm not familiar with the uh, Kyrillic, uh, Kyrillic science, but Privet. That's what I know. Privet. I hope I pronounced it correctly, though. Yeah, Aditya, thanks for pressing the bell icon. And actually, every one of you can can press uh, the bell icon. Oh, I, I know Honeywell. I know honey. I know Honeywell well. Uh, there wasn't a joke, but I tried to make a comma in my in building the sentence. I know them, yeah, that they're quite famous. Unfortunately, you are rejected. Girish, trust me, never give up. I have also been rejected from big companies, and think 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 of it that way. If one door closes, other ones open. So don't feel too too down and too depressed about it. Just work on yourself. Improve yourself by one percent every day. And you will make you will have great results trust me I, I really believe that and if you struggle just drop me a voice message on instagram and i can answer you and motivate you back if i see the message by the way because there are, i'm getting a lot of messages and also sometimes spam <laughs> but um yeah yeah thanks for the feedback by the way for the live sessions uh you can also use the stickers by the way but you have you would have to spend some money on it which i don't want but if you want you can use the uh, super sticker what was it called super chat i recently unlocked because i can monetize my channel now and i earned like 30 cents out of it so far which is nothing 
Yeah, rejection is nothing bad. Um, I used to think that rejection um, aims at your skills and so on when I was like five years younger. Um, but don't take it too personal. Um, as I mentioned, if one, one door closes, other ones open. So don't feel too uh, too sad about it. The, th the same by, was, by the way, with my thesis. Like I had some setbacks in university. Uh, sir had surgery and uh, private stuff going on. But if you just... Li life continues. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you're still laying down in your bed at the end of the day. You feel your pillow and you're still alive, right? So... What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's what, what people say. Thank you, by the way, Ivan. Thank you for the feedback. Absolutely. Hey, friend. Shazia is also joining the live stream. <laughs> You're too late. Girish, by the way, um, you can have all the skills in the world and all the certificates in the world and by the way, I'm not a big fan of certificates. Um, you can do them. I'm doing them as well on Coursera just to show people, hey, I have done um, communication uh, communication certificate. I'm doing this course by Andrew Eng or in machine learning, for example. And um, yeah, but uh, coming back to your question, I was distracted. Sorry. Coming back to your, to your uh, statement, um, you can have all the skill in the world still be rejected. Just keep working on you and make sure that you keep applying even if you have like from 1000 applications 999 will reject you just just keep going um you can include join yeah i did here i think join is just for a specific subscriber count i think 50000 if i'm not mistaken and then you can have like emojis and this kind of things thank you pandyan for the feedback uh I said like at one hour and six minutes, I said, uh, let's close. And then we already have half an hour more, but I'm really enjoying like interacting with you guys. So. Um, yeah. I mean, if you want, want to come to Germany, study here and so on and uh, working here, give it, give it a try, give it a spin. There's nothing wrong with it. How to access your future videos. What do future videos do you mean? Like future videos on my channel, you, you can just uh, access them publicly. However, if I have like paid ones, um, then I will have my own platform and then you can watch the videos there. It won't be like super high uh, in terms of pricing. It really depends on the on the course, of course, but um, it will be affordable always because I know what it's like to be a student. And I, I paid when I go when you go to industry trainings, for example, in uh, Stuttgart, there was a training on uh, finite elements. Uh, explicit implicit analysis and so on and that co also cost me like two three hundred euros uh, but I saw it as an investment in myself and also giving back to you guys and hopefully the, the return on investment or the like the, the break-even point will be like find the future but um, I mean yeah at some point it will come back once I blow up I mean hopefully it will come back Yeah, Shazia is saying it. You can come here as a student if you have the German skills. It, it works out. Anyway, guys, uh, with that being said, I still have to do my... Um, I still have to go to the supermarket because it, it closes in half an hour. So, yeah. With that being said, um, contact me on social media if you want. And I'll end the live stream now. Thank you so much for attending. And as I mentioned, connect with me on Patreon if you want and social media. Thank you so much and take care. Bye bye.